The Seven Laws of Noah Hebrew, SB Bini NH Shiva Mitzvah Bene Noach, also referred to as the Noahide Laws or the Nochide Laws from the Hebrew pronunciation of Noah, are a set of imperatives which, according to the Talmud, were given by God as a binding set of laws for the children of Noah. That is, all of humanity. Accordingly, any non Jew who adheres to these laws because they were given by Moses is regarded as a righteous Gentile, and is assured of a place in the world to come. Wellem HB Olam Haba, the final reward of the righteous. The seven Noahide laws, as traditionally enumerated, are the following Not to worship idols, Not to curse God, To establish courts of justice, Not to commit murder, Not to commit adultery or sexual immorality. Not to steal. Not to eat flesh torn from a living animal. According to the Talmud, the rabbis agree that the seven laws were given to the sons of Noah. However, they disagree on precisely which laws were given to Adam and Eve. Six of the seven laws are exegetically derived from passages in Genesis, with the seventh being the establishing of courts. <laughs> Sources Torah According to the Genesis flood narrative, a deluge covered the whole world, killing every surface-dwelling creature except Noah, his wife, his sons and their wives, and the animals taken aboard Noah's ark. According to this, all modern humans are descendants of Noah, thus the name Noahide laws is referred to the laws that apply to all of humanity. After the flood, God sealed a covenant with Noah with the following admonitions Genesis chapter 9 flesh of a living animal. However, flesh with its life blood in it, you shall not eat. 9-4 Murder and courts. Furthermore, I will demand your blood, for the taking of your lives, I shall demand it even from any wild animal. From man too, I will demand of each person's brother the blood of man. He who spills the blood of man, by man his blood shall be spilt, for in the image of God he made man. 9-5-6 Topic. Book of Jubilees The Book of Jubilees, generally dated to the 2nd century BCE, may include an early reference to Noahide law at verses 720-28. And in the 28th Jubilee Noah began to enjoin upon his son's sons the ordinances and commandments, and all the judgments that he knew, and he exhorted his sons to observe righteousness, and to cover the shame of their flesh, and to bless their Creator, and honor father and mother, and love their neighbor, and guard their souls from fornication and uncleanness and all iniquity. For owing to these three things came the flood upon the earth. For whoso sheddeth man's blood, and whoso eateth the blood of any flesh, shall all be destroyed from the earth. Topic. Acts 15 The Jewish Encyclopedia article on Saul of Tarsus states, According to Acts, Paul began working along the traditional Jewish line of proselytizing in the various synagogues where the proselytes of the gate e Exodus chapter 20 verse 9, and the Jews met, and only because he failed to win the Jews to his views, encountering strong opposition and persecution from them, did he turn to the Gentile world after he had agreed at a convention with the apostles at Jerusalem to admit the Gentiles into the church only as proselytes of the gate, that is, after their acceptance of the Noachian laws Acts chapter 15 verses 1 to 30. The article, New Testament, states, For great as was the success of Barnabas and Paul in the heathen world, the authorities in Jerusalem insisted upon circumcision as the condition of admission of members into the church, until, on the initiative of Peter, and of James, the head of the Jerusalem church, it was agreed that acceptance of the Noachian laws, namely, regarding avoidance of idolatry, fornication, and the eating of flesh cut from a living animal, should be demanded of the heathen desirous of entering the church. Topic. Tosefta The earliest complete rabbinic version of the seven laws can be found in the Tosefta where they are listed as follows. Seven commandments were commanded of the sons of Noah Concerning adjudication denim. Concerning idolatry avoda zara. Concerning blasphemy Concerning sexual immorality Concerning blood shed Concerning robbery Concerning a limb torn from a living animal 
Topic: Halakha and the Seven Laws. Topic: Talmud. According to the Talmud, the Noahide laws apply to all humanity. In Judaism, Bani Nh Bnei Noah (Hebrew: Descendants of Noah, Children of Noah) refers to all of humankind. The Talmud also states, "Righteous people of all nations have a share in the world to come." Any non-Jew who lives according to these laws is regarded as one of the righteous among the Gentiles. The rabbis agree that the seven laws were given to the sons of Noah. However, they disagree on precisely which laws were given to Adam and Eve. Six of the seven laws are exegetically derived from passages in Genesis. The Talmud adds extra laws beyond the seven listed in the Tosefta which are attributed to different rabbis, such as the grafting of trees and sorcery among others, Ola going so far as to make a list of thirty laws. The Talmud expands the scope of the seven laws to cover about one hundred of the six hundred thirteen mitzvah. Topic. Punishment In practice Jewish law makes it very difficult to apply the death penalty. No record exists of a Gentile having been put to death for violating the seven laws. Some of the categories of capital punishment recorded in the Talmud are recorded as having never been carried out. It is thought that the rabbis included discussion of them in anticipation of the coming messianic age. The Talmud lists the punishment for blaspheming the ineffable name of God as death. The sons of Noah are to be executed by decapitation for most crimes, considered one of the lightest capital punishments, by stoning if he has intercourse with a Jewish betrothed woman, or by strangulation if the Jewish woman has completed the marriage ceremonies, but had not yet consummated the marriage. In Jewish law the only form of blasphemy which is punishable by death is blaspheming the ineffable name Leviticus chapter 24 verse 16. Some Talmudic rabbis held that only those offenses for which a Jew would be executed, are forbidden to Gentiles. The Talmudic rabbis discuss which offenses and sub-offenses are capital offenses and which are merely forbidden. Maimonides states that anyone who does not accept the seven laws is to be executed, as God compelled the world to follow these laws. However, for the other prohibitions such as the grafting of trees and bestiality he holds that the sons of Noah are not to be executed. Maimonides adds a universalism lacking from earlier Jewish sources. The Talmud differs from Maimonides in that it considers the seven laws enforceable by Jewish authorities on non-Jews living within a Jewish nation. Nominides disagrees with Maimonides' reasoning. He limits the obligation of enforcing the seven laws to non-Jewish authorities taking the matter out of Jewish hands. The Tosafot seems to agree with Nominides' reasoning. According to some opinions, punishment is the same whether the individual transgresses with knowledge of the law or is ignorant of the law. Topic. Subdivisions Various rabbinic sources have different positions on the way the seven laws are to be subdivided in categories. Maimonides, in his Mishnah Torah, included the grafting of trees. Like the Talmud, he interpreted the prohibition against homicide as including a prohibition against abortion. David ben Solomon ibn Abi Zimra, a commentator on Maimonides, expressed surprise that he left out castration and sorcery, which were also listed in the Talmud. The Talmudist Ullah said that here are thirty laws which the sons of Noah took upon themselves. However, he only lists three, namely the three that the Gentiles follow not to create a ketubah between males, not to sell carrion or human flesh in the market, and to respect the Torah. The rest of the laws are not listed. Though the authorities seem to take it for granted that Allah's thirty commandments included the original seven, an additional thirty laws is also possible from the reading. Two different lists of the thirty laws exist. Both lists include an additional twenty three mitzvah, which are subdivisions or extensions of the seven laws. One from the 16th century work Asera Mamaro by Rabbi Menahem Azariah Dafano and a second from the 10th century Samuel Ben Hafni, which was recently published from his Judeo Arabic writings after having been found in the Cairo Geniza. Rabbi Zvi Hirschchajas suggests Menahem Azariah of Fano enumerated commandments are not related to the first seven, nor based on scripture, but instead were passed down by oral tradition. Ger Tashiv resident alien. 
In earlier times, a Gentile living in the land of Israel who accepted the seven laws in front of a rabbinical court was known as a ger tashiv, literally stranger, resident. The regulations regarding Jewish-Gentile relations are modified in the case of a ger tashiv. Topic: <laughs> Contemporary status. Historically, some rabbinic opinions consider non-Jews not only not obliged to adhere to all the remaining laws of the Torah, but actually forbidden to observe them. Noahide law differs radically from Roman law for Gentiles, just gentium, if only because the latter was enforceable judicial policy. Rabbinic Judaism has never adjudicated any cases under Noahide law. Jewish scholars disagree about whether Noahide law is a functional part of halakha, Jewish law. Some modern views hold that penalties are a detail of the Noahide laws and that Noahides themselves must determine the details of their own laws for themselves. According to this school of thought, see N. Rockofer, Law and the Noahides 1998, M. Dallin, The Rainbow Covenant 2003, The Noahide laws offer mankind a set of absolute values and a framework for righteousness and justice, while the detailed laws that are currently on the books of the world states and nations are presumptively valid. In recent years, the term Noahide has come to refer to non-Jews who strive to live in accord with the seven Noahide laws, the terms observant Noahide or Torah-centered Noahides would be more precise but these are infrequently used. Support for the use of Noahide in this sense can be found with the Ritva, who uses the term son of Noah to refer to a Gentile who keeps the seven laws, but is not a ger tashiv. The rainbow, referring to the Noahide or First Covenant Genesis chapter 9, is the symbol of many organized Noahide groups, following Genesis chapter 9 verses 12 to 17. To various modern theologians the Noahide laws represent the inclusive nature of Judaism because they affirm the equality of Jews and non-Jews. To other intellectuals these seven laws represent natural law which are accessible to all through intellect and do not require revelation. According to Robert Eisen the second stream of thought ignores how a non-Jew could access these laws without the Jewish revelations. To Eisen, these set of laws impose a Jewish understanding of morality upon non-Jews. To Eisen, the Noahide laws represent more of a barrier between Jews and non-Jews, because non-Jews are forbidden to observe Jewish laws. <laughs> Maimonides The Jewish scholar Maimonides 12th century held that Gentiles may have a part in the world to come just by observing Noahide law and accept it as given by Moses. Such children of Noah become the status of chassidei umot haolam, pious people of the world, and are different from children of Noah who only keep the seven laws out of moral, ethical reasoning alone. He writes in his Book of Laws, Anyone who accepts upon himself and carefully observes the seven commandments is of the righteous of the nations of the world and has a portion in the world to come. This is as long as he accepts and performs them because he truly believes that it was the Holy One, blessed be he, who commanded them in the Torah, and that it was through Moses our teacher we were informed that the sons of Noah had already been commanded to observe them. But if he observes them because he convinced himself, then he is not considered a resident convert and is not of the righteous of the nations of the world, but merely one of their wise. Some later editions of the Mishnah Torah differ by one letter and read, nor one of their wise men. The later reading is narrower. Spinoza read Maimonides as using nor and accused him of being narrow and particularistic. Other philosophers such as Hermann Cohen and Moses Mendelssohn have used more inclusive interpretations of the passage by Maimonides. In either reading, Maimonides appears to exclude philosophical Noahides from being righteous Gentiles. Thus Maimonides emphasizes that a truly righteous Gentile follows the seven laws because they are divinely revealed and thus are followed out of obedience to God. Christianity. The apostolic decree recorded in Acts 15 is commonly seen as a parallel to Noahide law, however, some modern scholars dispute the connection between Acts 15 and Noahide law, the content of Noahide law, the historical reliability of the Acts of the Apostles, and the nature of biblical law in Christianity. The apostolic decree is still observed by Eastern Orthodoxy and includes some food restrictions. The 18th century rabbi Jacob Emden proposed that Jesus, and Paul after him, intended to convert the Gentiles to the Noahide laws while calling on the Jews to keep the full law of Moses. 
Chabad movement Maimonides stated that God commanded Moses to compel the world to accept these seven commandments. In 1983 Rabbi Menachem M. Schneerson urged his followers to actively engage in activities to inform non-Jews about these seven commandments, which had not been done in previous generations. Sefer Shiva Mitzvah Hashem After Rabbi Schneerson started his Noahide campaign in the 1980s, a codification of the exact obligations of the Gentiles in the spirit of the classical Shulchan Aruch was needed. In 2005, Rabbi Moshe Wiener of Jerusalem accepted to produce an in-depth codification of the Noahide precepts. The work is called Sefer Shiva Mitzvah Hashem, the Book of Seven Divine Commandments published 2008-2009. As it was approved by both of the then presiding chief rabbis of Israel, Rabbi Shlomo Moshe Amar and Rabbi Yona Metzger, as well as by other Hasidic and non Hasidic Halashik authorities, it can claim an authoritative character and is referred as a Shulchan Aruch for Gentiles at many places. Topic. Public recognition Topic. United States In 1987 President Ronald Reagan signed a proclamation speaking of "...the historical tradition of ethical values and principles, which have been the bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization when they were known as the Seven Noahide Laws, transmitted through God to Moses on Mount Sinai." And in 1991, Congress stated in the preamble to the 1991 bill that established Education Day in honor of the birthday of Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the leader of the Chabad movement. Whereas Congress recognizes the historical tradition of ethical values and principles which are the basis of civilized society and upon which our great nation was founded, whereas these ethical values and principles have been the bedrock of society from the dawn of civilization, when they were known as the Seven Noahide Laws. Topic. Israeli Druze In January 2004, Sheikh Moafak Tarif, the spiritual leader of Israeli Druze, signed a declaration, which called on non-Jews living in Israel to observe the Noahide laws. He was joined by the mayor of Shefa, Amr. See also Code of Hammurabi List of ancient legal codes Natural law Shidduch Topic. References Topic. Further reading Bar Elisheva, Torah for Gentiles, The Messianic and Political Implications of the B'nai Noah Laws. 2008, ISBN 978-965-91329-0-4 Bleich, J. David. Judaism and Natural Law. In Jewish Law Annual, Vol. 7 5-42 Bleich, J. David. Tikkun Olam, Jewish Obligations to Non-Jewish Society. In, Tikkun Olam, Social Responsibility in Jewish Thought and Law. Edited by David Schatz, Chaim I. Waxman and Nathan J. Diamond. Northvale, N.J., Jason Aronson, 1997. ISBN 0-7657-5951-9. Broyd, Michael J. The Obligation of Jews to Seek Observance of Noahide Laws by Gentiles, a Theoretical Review. In Tikkun Olam, Social Responsibility in Jewish Thought and Law. Edited by David Schatz, Chaim I. Waxman and Nathan J. Diamond. Northvale, N.J., Jason Aronson, 1997. ISBN 0-7657-5951-9. Cecil, Alan W. The Noahide Code, A Guide to the Perplexed Christian. Aventura, Academy of Shem Press, 2006. ISBN 0-9779885-0-3. Cohen, Yaakov Dovid. Divine Image. Insights into the Laws of Noah, published by the Institute of Noahide Code 2006 ISBN 1-4243-1008 online www.noahide.org Cowan, Shimon Dovid. Perspectives on the Noahide Laws, Universal Ethics. 
The Institute of Judaism and Civilization, third edition, 2008. ISBN 0 9585933 Chlorphene C and Rigalski Y. The Path of the Righteous Gentile: An Introduction to the Seven Laws of the Children of Noah. Targum Press, 1987. ISBN 0-87306-433-X. Online version. Dallin, Michael. The Rainbow Covenant, Torah and the Seven Universal Laws ISBN 0-9719388-2-2 Library of Congress Control No. 2003102494 and online excerpts and comics Liechtenstein, Aaron. The Seven Laws of Noah. New York, The Rabbi Jacob Joseph School Press and Z. Berman Books, 2D ed., 1986. Library of Congress Catalog Card No. 80-69121. Novak, David. The Image of the Non-Jew in Judaism, An Historical and Constructive Study of the Noahide Laws. New York, E. Mellon Press, 1983. Novak, David. Natural Law in Judaism. Cambridge, New York, Cambridge University Press, 1998. Rockofer, Nahum. Law and the Noahides, Law as a Universal Value. Jerusalem, Library of Jewish Law, 1998. External links Spitzer, Jeffrey. The Noahide Laws. My Jewish Learning. Singer, Isidore, Greenstone, Julius H. 1906. Noachian Laws. Jewish Encyclopedia. Kopelman Foundation. What Does God Expect from Non-Jews? Ask Noah International and The Divine Code, Shulchan Aruch Code of Torah Law for Gentiles Institute of Noahide Code Academy of Shem, Educational Resources for Noahides Wikinoah, online resource of history, halacha, publications, and websites concerning B'nai Noah Detailed explanations of the Noahide laws for beginners Seven Laws of Noah animated video